Hello, welcome back to RS Thinks. Today I'm at Farnborough at the fully charged outside show. Um, I'm here again, I was here yesterday and the day before. Um, other videos coming soon if this is the first one that I put up. When I was last at Farnborough, I filmed the AC Cobra Series 1 Electric. If you haven't seen that video, please check the top corner and there's a link to that. It's really worthwhile watching because it's such a fabulous car. But the subject of this video is, you can tell over my shoulder, is Nissan and it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's a world exclusive, but it's, it's the first show in the UK that I believe that the Nissan Aria has been to. And I'm here bright and early before anybody else so that I can give you a walk around and give you an overview of it. So I'm just gonna get on the stand in a few seconds. So when you join me, we should be with the car. Here is the Nissan Aria in all its glory. Um, as I said earlier, there's nobody else on the stand. I'm here very, very early to try and make sure that I can show you as much as possible. Um, I did try yesterday, but the stand was absolutely rammed. So this is actually perfect. So I'm gonna give you a walk around like I normally do. Unfortunately, I can't go inside the car, but I'm hoping I can do something clever with a 360 camera later. So let's see if I can do that. Um, so start down the sides. Um, at the front we've got what size wheels are these these are 19 inch wheels um look like a kind of aerodynamic kind of thing on them they're actually plastic parts on them so maybe they're replaceable that's a question i can ask later you've got a charge pot on this side and there also is a charge pot on the other side as well now this is a japanese spec car i've been told so this comes with chadamo um, on one side and then there's type 2 on the other side for the UK spec car, it's going to come with CCS and the port's going to be on the passenger side. Um, Charging is going to be 130 kilowatts, which is, which is pretty good. It's, it's faster than most things of the um, 400 volt variety at the moment. This, yes, this is a 400 volt car rather than being an 800 volt car. So you're, you're limited slightly with the charging, but 130 is a pretty good speed for this. So it's kind of comparable with what else is out there. So at the A-pillar, we've got um, a chrome piece that extends all the way over the top, follows the roof of the car, the lines of the car, and goes to the back, which is, is quite nice. Um, door handles, very nice and robust, different design to the Leaf. I don't believe them carried over from anything else. Um, the wheel arches, both front and back, are kind of extended out a bit, which gives it a nice kind of beefy kind of look as well. Um, the wheels really do feel the arches. There's not a lot of space in here, so it, it does sit quite well. Um, as I said, the roof, the roof kind of swoops over. Uh, it would have been interesting to see what the headroom is like in the back, but unfortunately I can't go inside. But as with most EVs that I've seen recently, including my own ID3 and the ID4, there's, there's always this kind of extended panel on the back just to elongate it a bit more, just to disrupt the airflow over the back. So the battery capacities, it comes in two. You've got a 65 kilowatt and you've got a 90 kilowatt. The Drivetrain is also available in front-wheel drive only and all-wheel drive only. The all-wheel drive is primarily front-wheel drive until you need the performance or until you put your foot down. Then the rear-wheel drive kicks in as well and it gives you 50-50 um, split of power. Um, not to 60 time on this one, this is um, an E-Force. That's force spelled 4 O-R-C-E because this is an all-wheel drive version. The not to 60 time on that is 4.8 seconds and it has 394 PS and generates up to 600 Newton meters of torque. So this, is, this thing is going to be quick um, despite the weight. So it's kind of the performance version, which, which should be good. It'd be great to get hold of one, but let's see how this goes first. So at the front, you've got a really nice lit Nissan badge. So no one's going to be in any doubt as to what you're driving when they go down the road, because when someone sees this for the first time, they're going to think, what the hell is this? 
You've got the very nice family style V grill on the front. Not really a grill, but because you, you've got the um, plastic piece here with this nice kind of pattern in it too. You've got air vents down the side as well to channel the air around the wheels to aid aerodynamics. And you've got the nice DRL here, which also changes to the indicator light and it actually pulses as well. You've got mini projector LED headlights in here too, which are really bright. I turned them on earlier and it was looked really cool. We've actually got something that's called the horizon line. So the line here just to the lower of the bonnet actually tracks around the whole side of the car. So you can follow it around. It's a really nice design style, which is, which is good. You've got some airflow under here as well. So that's the front. So from this angle, you really get to see the, the lines and the shape of the car. As I said before, it's very swoopy over the back. Um, high in the middle, low at the back. Really, really nice shape. Kind of a bit, if I was to compare it to something, it'd be like the the um, e-tron sport bike that you saw earlier on my channel. It's kind of got a very similar swoopy shape to that, all to aid aerodynamics. And you can see the horizon line that comes all the way from here, all the way down the side, and then comes all the way and integrating into the boot, just there. We've got very nice um, red LED strip that grows a full width, which looks really cool. Seems to be kind of the norm now on cars of this this type, uh, the smaller SUV electric car. Got the vents in the back to let the airflow come down over the window. You've kind of got a little spoiler type thing at the back here, which is quite nice too. Massive area of glass, so I imagine it'd be quite good to see out of. And you've just got the brake light just under here as well, the high-vis um, brake light too. You've got reversing camera just under here and that will tie in with the 360 degree camera system that it's got so if you've driven a leaf before or, or any other nissan with that you kind of get a top-down view of your car so very useful for guiding you into like parking spaces or precision parking or things where you can kind of uh, maneuver yourself well by using the cameras which is something i miss on my id3 loved it on my leaf and wish i'd have specced it but never mind so let's look inside the boot So the boot is 466 litres, which is just less than the EV6 at 490 and a lot less than the ID4, which is 543. You've got a split level boot floor, which you can modularise where you put these as well. And you've also got storage space underneath. Uh, this one's got a Bose subwoofer in here and you've also got the compressor and the gunk for the tyres and also the 12 volt batteries in the back of here as well. There are extra compartments left and right and i can't see any 12 volt socket in the back or anything and it looks like there are some cargo hooks just in the front as well it will tow up to 1500 kilograms braked so if you compare it with the ev6 that will do 1600 kilograms and it's actually more than the id4 which can only do a thousand kilograms braked so if you need to tow then this is this is a good car to look for so the car's also got a glass sunroof as well, this particular one. There's also an electric retractable cover inside it. So it's got a lounge-like inside. The centre console actually moves forwards and backwards because of the flat floor, which is quite a nice touch. There's a 10.4 inch head-up display in there. And there's two times 12.3 inch screens, one in the middle, one for the driver. And you can actually swipe things between the screens. So if there's something on the passenger screen that the driver should know about, you can swipe it across and vice versa. Something on the driver's screen, you can swipe it across to the passengers, which, which is quite a cool touch. The steering wheel is a two spoke steering wheel and you've got the usual controls on there as well. There's no regen paddles or anything like that. So you can get it with 19 or 20 inch wheels. And because of the short overhangs, as you can see, you've practically got a wheel at each corner, so the handling will be absolutely superb. So that was just a brief overview of the Nissan Aria here at the fully charged outside show in Farnborough. And there were quite a few features that I couldn't cover, um, such as like, it's got a degree of autonomous driving, it's got Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, there are other interior features inside. So for instance, you can move the center console forwards and backwards, but because I couldn't get physically inside the car myself, 
I wasn't able to demonstrate any of those. But if you want any more information, then please check out the Nissan website where you find everything you need to know. Um, just want to mention Alex, who was a stand manager here, who allowed me the unprecedented access to the to the car. It was absolutely fantastic. Anything I wanted, they allowed me to um, basically open the open the car for me and switch it on and other bits and pieces. So that was that was greatly appreciated. Just wait till the aeroplane goes over. So all I have to say is just thank you for watching, please like, share and subscribe and I'll see you again in the next video.